Welcome to the Earthworks Geo Blacklight Sprint Demo. I'm going to be just demoing the work that uh, has been completed over the past few weeks. Um, uh, the local team here at Stanford consisted of myself, Jack Reed, Darren Hardy, uh, Kim Durante, and Stace Maples. So we had three goals um, coming into this sprint. Uh, first, to update our indexing pipeline to pull metadata from our Open Geo metadata partners. Uh, second, to update GeoMonitor, which is a monitoring system we use to monitor um, uh, federated web services. And the third is to add index map viewing support in Geo Blacklight. I'm happy to say we accomplished all three of these goals and uh, some additional uh, things too. Uh, one thing to note, this you won't be able to see it here, but uh, we've done a lot of uh, technical improvements kind of on the back end here. So we were able to update Earthworks and um, you know, update it to the latest versions of Blacklight, Geo Blacklight, and Ruby on Rails, um, and uh, add security updates. And another thing to note you can't really see is we were able to consolidate uh, the services that drive how uh, Earthworks is used. So we were able to actually eliminate five uh, web servers that we had to maintain. Um, so five additional servers are no longer needed and de decommissioned now. So uh, the first thing you'll notice here is that we have a new home page. So part of the additional work we were able to do was to uh, modify the design of the home page here. Uh, big thanks to Jennifer Vine and Gary Geisler for helping and assist doing this. But uh, what you'll see is kind of a more uh, focused uh, search bar at the top. So it's larger and a bit more prominent uh, to hopefully drive users to type something in there and start their search. Second thing you'll see is we now have a new explore area. This gives users the op opportunity to start a focused search uh, based off maybe uh, some topical interest or uh, grouping of data that they're interested in. So if someone's interested in geospatial data, they can just click that and they immediately returned a um, search result of just focused on geospatial data. Uh, we've added these for scan maps, census data, and California data. So we can change these out um, at, or add more as time goes on. And uh, scan maps will help us uh, in the future as we add some of the Stanford scan maps to, to Earthworks. Uh, the third change is uh, an update of the map. Um, so the map here allows a user to kick off a spatial search. So I could zoom into an area, let's say this area works here, and search, and it uh, you know shows me a search result of that area. So uh, previously, this map on the homepage was zoomed out to the entire world. We felt that you know, zooming it into an area uh, communicates to a user that they can use it to uh, search an area. We also give them this message here to let them know about that. So uh, with that being said, I'm going to just search for everything here to show some of the indexing updates here. What you'll see now is we have uh, a lot more data. So we now have available 70,000 different data sets uh, from a whole bunch of different uh, partners here. So not only uh, we kind of have the ones we've had for a while, Harvard, MIT, Columbia, Tufts, NYU, but um, now we've added new partners like Princeton and then a lot of the Big Ten schools as part of the Big Ten um, GeoPortal project. So this gives users access to more data and um, you know the ability to search across a larger body. We've also updated uh, the monitoring here. So previously our GeoMonitor solution was a bit brittle. Uh, we've updated it and we've actually kind of rewritten it uh, to be a Ruby on Rails engine. So it's working within the Earthworks application which we're hoping will provide a much more kind of robust, uh, robust uh, monitoring experience. And so you, uh, this will stay more up to date. Previously, it wasn't really updating. Um, so we can see there's a you know, lot less uh, number of layers that are unavailable and we have you know, a lot of data sets that are available. Uh, the third thing I wanted to show is uh, index maps now being 
uh, available in this application. So we have one here that I'm gonna search for. Um, it's an area around North Korea. And uh, here we go, we go to the record here, and uh, this is an index map. Well, previously the um, map would just, uh, here I'll show you what it kind of looked like previously. Here we go. So previously it would just kind of look like this, where um, you just kind of have a uh, white uh, map preview and I can click on it and I can see some information about it, which that's great and that's definitely useful. But we've added this feature to GeoBlacklight now where if an index map is in GeoJSON and, and referenced here, the user actually gets hover over labels here. They can zoom in, they can click on this, and they can actually get thumbnails of this. So now they can preview it before they um, you know, go off to another web page and they can see what the map looks like. So you can see this uh, river here, I think. You can see it reflected in this uh, historic map. Uh, these maps are from the early 1900s and I can link out to its uh, persistent URL so I can download the map or you know, interact with it or zoom with it later. This is really important to Stanford just because it provides a local discovery experience now for our index maps, which are some of the most popular content in our collection. So that is our uh, demo today. Thanks so much and um, see you next time.